Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this was the second one we did over on EE Arts yesterday, talking about unlocking human potential, superpowers, clairvoyance, telepathy, healing, and Bronze Age miracles as we're no longer in the Kali Yuga. And since we're not in the Kali Yuga, a lot of things are possible. And I think most people just don't understand what human potential really, really is. And it is going to be mind-blowing for many people. You know, it is. It, it, it's a really good video. I think we were really thorough on this one. I, I like this one. It kind of brings out a lot of really good information. And, and this is within all of us. And we all have access to it. it it's, it is a matter of prioritizing I feel because you, you do you do have to push some things aside to bring other things in but you know that's part of life but this is this is what we do and this was a fun one and and this is exactly what the system doesn't want you watching more than pretty much anything even things that are uh, against the system and that they'll pull uh, from the system because they don't want you understanding what the big picture is uh, again, we want to thank everybody for their support over on Patreon. And here you see, this is serious. BRICS nations have officially set a date to ditch the U.S. dollar. They're launching their new currency, encouraging other nations to leave the U.S. dollar system. So we learned about this from the meetings that were going on between Russia and China. As you know, you know Xi and Putin were there and they're walking around. They got their guys following them with their nuclear briefcases everywhere. It really was, uh, it feels that it was uh, the last big meeting in person before major events uh, occur. Here we are, it's May 23rd. Amazingly, we have not had a, a large quake. In fact, after all that activity from the sun, there's really been nothing. And that's really weird. <laughs> that is really, really weird. Uh, you know, people like Dutch will tell you that, uh, you know, there should have been something, but there was nothing. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. Let the games begin. China launches Exercise Joint Sword 2024A. Hmm, interesting. A. I guess, you know, maybe, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what, what develops. Yeah, we'll see what develops. Joint sword surrounding Taiwan from all directions. Uh, yeah, they, they are surrounding Taiwan from all directions. Have they done this before? Two degrees, although this time it does feel different. It, it really does have a different edge to that joint sword. Joint sword, joint sword. Hmm. China is actively arming Putin's war in Ukraine. The UK confirms for first time as Xi and Putin cement. Oh, the axis of evil. Here you go again. My God, we've been through this so many times. So China is flogging arms to Russia, a major boost to Putin's war in Ukraine. The Britain defense minister claimed spies tracked lethal aid from China to Russia. And then to Ukraine, Grant Shapps revealed on Wednesday. And if it is the case that they're getting ready to go into Taiwan, if you actually listen to what the uh, General Hao Shan had said back in 2005, Taiwan is meaningless. We need to control the U.S., Canada, and Australia. That's the meaningful part. Also, the fact that if they control the U.S., they'll end up controlling everything rather easily. The hard part's the U.S. Meanwhile, you have multiple sources saying now it's really a lot of things are coming out this morning. Um, China will invade Taiwan when? Early June this year. So early June is the time that we got from the guides that the war starts uh, coincidentally. Yeah. But of course, there's no coincidences. But I still think, you know, I'm just hoping we can push it. Um, to like 4th of July and nothing's happened because then, you know, it feels like we maybe really did shift a major uh, bullet in the time frames. But if, if, if this is going to kick off um, pretty much right when the guide said it would be kicking off and they did show also major volcanic activity at the same time, <clears throat> I don't know, then maybe we are still on the same timeline or a similar one. Uh, it just it just is 
feeling that things are getting to be very, very obvious for more and more people all the time. This is one of the last cards they have to play, too. They have the war and they have the alien card. Those, those are big, major cards. There is really, you can look at it as one other card that they can play, which uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of. All those drones and robots that they're building. <clears throat> have you noticed how many movies have those little robot dogs in them? And they actually literally are patrolling certain cities already. There's a lot more to that than meets the eye. If, if you're an old uh, Star Trek, not, well, not Star Trek in this case, Star Wars uh, fan, and you remember the drone wars, again, everything is in the movies, it's in the Simpsons, because they control all the movies. And again, they have insiders in the secret societies that are in all the places that are giving us media and movies and, and you know, the politics and the religions, too. And, you know, again, that's maybe the hardest thing for some people to to understand. But of course, I mean, if they control all this, then they're going to control the mainstream religions. By the way, Blinken says it's now, you know, OK, go ahead to Ukraine to strike deep inside of Russia using everything that the U.S. is giving them. Also reports saying that that humanitarian aid um, pier that they've constructed that literally took half a dozen or more ships to bring it off the, off the Gaza coast is really funneling in weapons. It, you know, and that, you know, it was labeled humanitarian aid and there may be some food in there and things. But no, what they're really doing is is channeling in weapons and in, in, in a backdoor situation. Yeah, I mean, this is the stuff that's a little bit harder for me to grasp. And that's why I really appreciate Mike to be here and kind of take take all the corners and put them all together and, and dot to dot. And um, I don't I don't know. I have such a hard time grasping war stuff, but it's just my makeup. That's I think why we're together. You know, I get a lot of the information when it comes to humans and and the bodies and the energy and he gets the information when it comes to picking out patterns when it comes to war because he's very good at it and i think that's like past life is what what does that yeah, yeah i think it is and we, we were talking a lot about past life it was on that energy one yeah you know the human potential so like last night um we were doing a little meditation i asked her if she was getting something she started to describe something and it's like yeah i see it because i'm picking up on her antenna um and that's the beauty of things this is what's going to be happening more and more all the time we are going to split into different classifications of humans we're not going to all be homo sapiens sapiens homo sapiens sapiens is going away and again there's going to be whatever Elon and, and crew want to call it and then there's going to be kind of like a homo superior uh, humans with uh, unusual abilities well unusual for a dark age but again as we were talking about in that video it's just what we are not three quarters of the time because the the yugas are not identical you know the Kali Yuga is very very brief and and I think it's much briefer then people realize too because time itself is relative and these are some of the rabbit holes that i want to take more time explaining to people and and we're just hoping that more people will actually listen because we see the core always listens and comments um to everything whether it's you know war related and doom and gloom or whether it's human potential and and amazing hope right ahead of us you know, again, they just want you focusing on on the dark stuff that lowers your frequency and and not w realizing that you have the power to change all this. Collectively, we could shift the whole paradigm on the planet. And this is why we always cover this stuff, because we don't have enough people here awake yet to shift the entirety of the paradigm on the planet where the pa planet itself is no longer under their control because this could all fall apart for them to the point where they have no more say at all if people would shift the way they, they think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there that we, we did watch a movie and it had to do with humans with different abilities 
and other humans in the power structure and the power structure really looking down upon those abilities even though they used them within their unit you know and then the other people who had them they weren't allowed to use them to get a leg up on life they weren't allowed to use them to benefit themselves in any way shape or form they were immediately attacked and, and squashed so we have this thing going on now, and I really think that it's just going to get worse. Right right now, the power structure says, okay, don't use these abilities, don't use those abilities, don't do this, don't do that, you're going to burn in hell and die forever. And when they're the ones who are doing it, they're the ones who are doing it, <laughs> you know, and to, to bring about um, what, what they want. And when it comes to these abilities, you don't have to do them a specific way i know the power structure uses them in a very dark way and that's not what we're talking about at all but you do have the ability to strengthen your energy and push yourself out there and move consciousness in such a way that it can benefit you it can benefit you and it doesn't have to be mean and nasty like the power structure does it no no they want you looking at things like this oh no another town wiped off the map or another town you know, horribly um, blown to bits by tornadoes. This this is exactly why they are initiating all this weather. And, and again, the, the great thing is there's so many people out there that are now actively, even if it costs them, because it will cost your pocketbook, <laughs> absolutely, to, to speak the truth. Uh, even if it costs them, they're, they're pointing out, this is technology, guys. This is technology. Look at this. This is technology. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then you got people that were posing. Oh, hey, I'm not afraid of this. By the way, I lost my arms. Yeah, uh, this is this is a member of parliament. My limbs amputated after sepsis. I wonder why. I just wonder why. Well, some people light up uh, like constellations because they have stuff in their body uh, relating to what we were just looking at. And, and literally, you know, there's almost no need to walk through uh, scanners or anything anymore because, you know, you could be completely tracked. This is what they want for the, the whole of the system. When you look to uh, the myths, and if you've ever wondered why the myths feel, the myths of olden day, feel kind of similar to our, our Marvel comics. It's because that's just basically a mo modern myth, but we're going back into the same times. You're going to see people that can do amazing things, uh, mind-blowing things, and they already have you conditioned through the movies. Uh, people with, you know, again, superpowers, you know, like you know your X-Men and stuff. Some with technologies. I've, I've seen people say, you know, the real-life Tony Stark, Elon Musk. How how much have we been conditioned to that? Was everything about Batman conditioning us to be ready for Elon? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Think about it. This is this is part of the conditioning, part of us getting ready for when they drop big bombs on us. And I don't mean WW3, because even though WW3, if it still comes about, and it still looks pretty likely, uh, like a high possibility... Those aren't the big bombs, and, and there is going to be new technology we've never seen used in it before, but this technology has been used in the past. That's the key, just just like what was said by um, Oppenheimer. Um, Heimer, Heimer. Uh, Oppenheimer. 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 You know, again, this wasn't the first time that this type of thing was seen, but, but the first time, you know, everybody in our age has seen it. Yes, that, that's a big difference. And what is the Bronze Age then if it's not a Dark Age and yet there's still warfare? Well, it's just that we know we're part of one side and they're part of another. So it's, it's like this elaborate ruse to get all the inmates to think that they're actually free and having a, a, a viable system that the inmates are creating when the whole time the the guards are not there to protect the inmates against any sort of boogeyman no no the guards are there to monitor the inmates so this is why the u.s spends half its money on military because it's been about policing you 
It's been about policing you the entire time. So the Bronze Age is the realization of this and the knowing things for what they are. It's, it's no more the illusion. New Zealand Beekeeper was ordered to destroy $2 million worth of bee boxes because the government said so. Oh, they say it was a safeguard against American fowl brood disease. Yeah, sure. You know, they'll again create and label a disease in a Petri dish. And then, you know, utilize that. Look, we have this. Well, I mean, we don't have it. It seems to be popping up over here, over there. And yet, what is it doing? It, it's enabling the controlling of the food supply because, again, they, they only want you eating certain things. They, they're they're going to tell you, you know, it might be stages. Right now, you know, you have the WHO basically saying, you know, in the UN, they're all part of that same organization with the Weefers. Uh, you know, the whole world has to shift to eating vegetarian, and that's that's kind of like a stage, and then and then it's going to literally be crickets, kids, crickets. You know, I hear the chocolate covered ones aren't so bad, and they're a little crunchy, but they get stuck between your teeth. It's crickets for you, kid. Crickets, crickets. <clears throat> well, it's. Cr- <laughs> it's it's cuttings for this guy. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Now, I, I don't know. Is there anybody still around that thinks that he makes a decision other than, again, you know, the most rudimentary decisions like I got to go potty? Does he have to ask? Does he have to ask? Does he put his hand up? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I, I got to go potty. I got to go potty. A campaign that's about about negative negative attacks attacks and the one one about what we're for because because we we cannot cannot get re-elected. We cannot win win this re-election. Excuse me, we can can only re-elect Donald Trump. Trump. (laughs) (laughs) Are you going off script? Are you telling them the script? What what are you trying to say? Campaign that's about about negative negative attacks attacks and the one about what we're for because we cannot get re-elected. We cannot win this re-election. Everybody is just confused. They're all confused. I mean, do you see the question marks? Look at the question marks popping up. This is a Biden rally. You know, well, hey, maybe the crickets got it. Okay, so this is something that people really do believe. And this is showing the amount of firearms per 100 people. In different countries, as you see, 37, 38, 55, uh, 55, there you go. Um, da, 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 USA, 120 per 100 people. This is why America could never be invaded. <sighs> Hang out to the, that thought, and we'll, we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Well, let, let's really hope so, you know, and I, I'm sure that the the number on that has been down right now. It says it's 120 per 100 people. I bet you at one point it was like 300 until they had all of those gun drives and all, all of those laws that get passed to make it difficult to purchase a gun. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to see. I think we have to remain strong and stand our ground and stay, stay a people that is able to protect themselves. The governments, they always have something else up their sleeve. It, it doesn't seem like they're super, super worried about it. And I've kind of had this feeling that it might come down to the inability to buy, buy the bullets for them, possibly. You know, and then unless you're one that has the ability to reload bullets. And my family did when I was little, but I don't right now. You know, it takes like kind of a, a bit of a setup to do that, to be able to reload your reload your stuff. Um a lot of people can't do that. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens. But I think we need to do whatever it is we need to do to remain uh, a people who can um, protect themselves. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. You know, uh, again, this, there's different technology out there that people just don't understand. And yes, so the American public is absolutely more uh, armed than any other public out there. But again, there's technology out there that can pinpoint one blue roof. And and that's that's what I mean. It, it's I don't think people have a clear idea of, of the type of technology that's in place. And there's also, literally, as we were talking about, there there are 
right now being built and there, I wouldn't be surprised if there's hidden away somewhere and it doesn't even have to be Mars massive massive numbers of troops that are completely synthetic completely synthetic you know whether we're talking um, something like the robots we've seen at Boston Dynamics or you know and you know human and canine and I just think it's really screwed up, honestly, that they do this with the canines because canines are our best friends. And, you know, they're trying to bring, again, fear to something that we absolutely adore and love, right? Uh, I, I just, I hate that. That was really hitting me yesterday, thinking about that, and that just kind of ticked me off a little bit more. You know, I, I've always been, uh, I'd say since the 90s, somebody of more of a prepping mindset. And so when I first left Connecticut and went to um, South Carolina, you know, embracing the country lifestyle, the first thing I got was a, a concealed carry. It was one of the first things I ever did. There was times in my life when I would practice every single day. Um, so, I mean, I've seen people, I've seen comments from, from some trolls like saying, you know, you can't throw daisies at, at the system or at an invasion and stuff and no I've, I've been on the other side I mean I had all the bases covered um, I just feel that over time I've realized that they want us to get that aggressive mentality they want us to to have a chip on our shoulder and to be almost itching for a gunfight just like the gunfighters at the OK Corral and that's not the way to to change and shift the paradigm it really isn't. <clears throat> it has to come <clears throat> from within, and it has to be. Uh, you know, it's it's been said by some people uh, that nothing can confuse uh, the darkness more than love. They just don't know how to respond to it. Not that we're going to throw daisies at invading CCP, <laughs> but I'm not. Again. Defend yourself, obviously, you know, if if the, if it comes to that. But first and foremost, look to evade uh, the conflict, because on all sides, people are being manipulated all sides. And whether it's it's somebody that is willing, ready and able to kill in the name of their God and, you know, view Allah as the one true uh, God, etc., or you know, a different being, they're all, all under this horrible illusion of, of our distorted reality that they give us. Mm -hmm. it, it, they do. They, they really do get stumped when it comes to people who are like, okay, you be a butthead over there. Me and my friends are going to really build a beautiful oasis over here. They don't know what to do with that. They really don't. But like Mike said, of course we defend ourselves. Um, I, if it comes to that point, and we have to, but don't get yourself led into something. Don't allow yourself to be pulled into their hatred. Don't allow yourself to to be that person that's that's hurt so badly that you lash out to every other person in your village or in your neighborhood. Don't be that person. Be that person that helps to figure out solutions for other people. Be that person who shines the light over everyone. And I tell you, they will stand back and they will be stumped. They won't really know what to do. They won't know how to respond. It's like, it's like you know, throwing a, a, a really <clears throat> nasty, strange code into a computer and the computer suddenly cannot calculate. They don't know what to do. So that's where we need to be. We need to be ready to protect ourselves if we need to. But we also need to be ready to be that person to help figure things out. Be that person to resolve other little bitty conflicts. Because there's going to be. Not everyone is going to get along. Not everyone will see eye to eye. But we will have to see eye to eye enough to have things function in the area that we are at. And that's going to take somebody being the bigger person and it's going to feel like that somebody is doing it 90% of the time. And maybe that somebody is you. But I'll tell you what, everybody else is going to feel like they're doing it most of the time too. And that's just the compromise we give for uh, creating a little society that gets along with one another and that is functional and that is impermeable to the hatred that they dispose or dispense to us. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We were talking about that filament. It did erupt, that long filament that we were talking about. So there was a filament or eruption that began on the earth yesterday. You know, it was actually pretty active. But again, they don't think that most of this is coming our way. And we've already seen a ton as well. But I do think what this is, is we have this brief little interlude um, before that other sunspot act, uh, area, which probably is still, we'll have to see, uh, still pretty active. I think we'll see a lot more activity um, early early in June again, you know, or at the very end of May. Uh, it, everything was bigger back then. Oh my goodness, look at the size of these things. Well, why would they do this? Why would they make books this big? This is fascinating, is it not? Oh, man. And, and when I think about the books I had available to me, um, again, when I was in a more stable civil, uh, civilization. Yes, back in the 1980s when I was in a more stable civilization. Yeah, yeah it really does feel that way. Um, I, I had a huge collection at one point in time. And then it dwindled down. I just had some core ones. And then we've been gathering up some again. And got a copy of a Chaldean, um, basically Genesis, which is interesting too, because when you look to the Chaldean source, it's it is predating anything biblical again, and it, there's a multiplicity of gods. It's it's again, it's not just one. And people don't understand how things are revised and rewritten all the time, and they just blindly believe. It just blindly believe the system. They think that the system can't have interfered with, with this, but this is the main, number one. Number one is your belief system. You know, the politics flow after that. Um, if they control that, they control everything. And, and, and it is the case. And when we see these big books, is it because people were bigger back then? Well, we, we are. We are, you know, we're much, much bigger. Again, the cycle of the yugas, I think, is is one of the first things I would be studying if I was really, really looking uh, to uncover our past and, and really understand the cycle of the yugas. It's the thing that gets me you know, super excited. Revisionist history is what we have. Yes, there were many, many giants. No, you know, and that's the other thing, too. When you look to the Chaldean um, Genesis, even though they did their best to uh, completely wipe it out. And, you know, there's been many more book burnings than just at Alexandria. There, and thankfully, too, there are, there's libraries in Tibet that are massive that haven't been translated yet that probably hold a lot of, um, a lot of the clues and, and a lot of the fill-in to the stuff that we do understand in our past. Um, it, it's been so controlled, so hidden, and what it all points to is what David Icke has been saying the whole time since the 90s, early 90s, and he says what I've been saying since the 1990s is confirmed by the science team at La Quinta Columna in Spain. Humanity is being controlled by an alien species, and, and it's something that some people will say, I can't take aliens, but I'll buy a deep state. I think it's just uh, ultra rich or uh, and we we had this discussion once uh, with David Debine adapt 2030 for hours we were talking early on maybe four years ago or so and we were talking about well, what about the leftovers the people that survived but had technology in Atlantis you know um, yeah absolutely you know it, it certainly is that but you have to realize too that a lot of those people came from off planet and yeah, some of them did survive. We know they did survive. They went and lived in uh, cities under the ocean. They went and lived in the inner earth. They went and lived off planet for the cataclysmic period and then came back to planet. It is an alien species. But then again, humans ourselves, we, we are uh, not truly indigenous. I guess it depends on how far you want to go back. You know, really, I mean, we're we're kind of like legalized aliens ourselves, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So you want to be tolerant, right? <laughs> you want to be tolerant. 
Oh, boy. Yeah. The, I mean, this is something I can't see it any other way. I mean, I see it as aliens take over because I, I look at what they are doing to humans and I can stand back and I can see, okay, there's no way that one human being or even a group of humans could put this uh, pattern together and get other humans to behave this way. They have to be alternative. They have to be from a different place. They have to be, they have to have hundreds of years to study and watch and see how humans are going to behave so they can put this, you know, this little block in place and then watch the humans go off on this certain direction. They know how to get humans to stream. They know which way to get them going if they, if they put in place this information or that block or, 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 you know, throw in this wrench in their fine tuned working mechanism whatever that might be they've had hundred hundreds of years to practice so i mean it's not that we do not have the ability to overcome but we do have to be probably out at least out on the on the fray because they're going for the mainstream they're going for the everybody they're going for the majority of people and we're kind of like scragglers you know we're the ones on on the on the outskirts we're the ones you know but i i think if if you don't step out of the mainstream and if you don't question your belief system you are definitely subject to be one of those who gets herded into one of their one of their many 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 traps that are laid absolutely so this is a map of cairo egypt from francesco valesio in 1560 question is what do you notice in the map well what I noticed when I was trying to search and get more information is time out, time out, time out, and, and spinning. And I tried multiple um, search engines, uh, of which, you know, I know Microsoft just did a new update with their AI search engine. <laughs> search engine and and it's making me think about what we were just talking about yesterday how they're erasing so much of it you know one third of the the internet's already gone it's gone because they've been taking out stuff that everybody's been adding in and uh they're trying to control the narrative so we we're heading into the bronze age and they're they're doubling up their efforts because you guys are figuring things out too quickly and and this makes it very hard for them to uh govern in an illusory way in which we think that we're still in control ourselves and it's just humans so what do you notice well one of the things is again why does it seem like there's pyramidal structures up on plateaus what's up with that isn't that curious? Pyramidal structures up on plateaus. Is this supposed to be the Sphinx? I, I, I don't know. I was looking at today's Cairo and trying to figure out um, relative positions um, without spending all day on this one subject because there's other stuff I want to bring up again. But I love to mention these things to y'all. And then you guys, whoever is into it and resonates with it, you know, go farther down and see what you can dig up. Um, this right here is is that face somebody blew up over there. One thing immediately hits me: if if the pyramids were on plateaus, you know what what's going on with that? I mean, we understand mud flood, and you know, Africa, the whole northern portion of Africa was rolled over with the ocean. The ocean did roll over that at one point in time but when they brought the moon in that was the younger dryas event um and there was other things happening there too that was a big uh, a big period of takeover literally uh, takeover martian takeover we keep saying that why you say that martian takeover well because again they will re rewrite things later on down the line to give you explanations they have also hijacked um, what's the good and the natural and tried to put themselves in its place and this is part of how they've made everything so confusing that they figure there's no way AI says there's no way the humans are going to be able to to you know figure this out yeah there's been great cataclysms on a much more regular basis um, what's the old name for Cairo Al-Mansuria, yeah. 
Al-Mansuriya. Hmm, interesting. What does it mean? Uh, Cairo. <laughs> First was named Al-Mansuriya, then it was changed to be Al-Kahira, Cairo, after the conqueror planet Mars. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Conqueror planet Mars. Cairo is known by many names, such as the City of a Thousand Minarets, because of the abundance of the mosques. Again, look to the style. Um, you know, and, and I, I just love the round architecture and the spires, and it does have that Tartarian look to it, doesn't it? And so, what, what's this about the Conqueror Planet Mars? Isn't that curious? You know, we'll, we'll deep dive into that a little bit more. But as we said, the Abrahamic tradition comes from Mars. It does. It comes from Mars. And, and for some and for a long time, it's going to be very difficult for people to swallow that. That's a pretty jagged pill because a belief system to people, I mean, that's sacred. That's your sacred ground. That's your sacred stomping ground. People don't want to say... I, I was fooled. Absolutely not, because it's actually dangerous to the human species. The human species, I mean, and, and we, we watch out for things that are attacking us. And to them, if somebody says that about our belief system, it, it's a direct attack. But you don't want to position yourself in a place where um, you're not able to move your belief system because that's where they lay all the traps. That's They love to lay the traps on the belief system pathway. So you really, I mean, explore your belief systems. There's a plethora of there out there to for us to learn from. There are so, so many. And, and I, Mike has studied gazillions. I've studied, you know, a few dozen. And I have made my own belief system. So I don't have to say, well, I, I belong to this belief system and I do this thing. No, I do what feels good in Cindy's heart. I, I feel what I do what feels good to me and my values and my understanding and my relationship with God is mine. It, it's all mine and it's what I have created, not what man man has created. So I, I think people should that's a that's a good place to be for me. That's what that's what I like. It feels good. But this is really curious what what he pulled up, you know, the name Cairo. <laughs> Where does that come from? That I mean, it speaks volumes to me. Well, you know, and, and, and here's my little astrology girl here. With the planet Mars in the ascendant, the first stone of Cairo was laid by General Gawar, who had conquered Egypt for the North African dynasty, the Fatimids. So, yeah, this this is, again, they do everything by astrology Be, because it's, it's part of the programming of the, uh, the original Matrix. And this tells you everything. Uh, you know, it's it's all about Mars. It's always been all about Mars. And I've alluded to this many times. People think that they are embracing the Prince of Peace when, in fact, it's the God of War. It has nothing to do with the real Yeshua. And when you look at the, just the term, the Lord of Hosts, Hosts are armies. It's military. It's all military. And it's all right in our face. So you look you look at Mars and, you know, when someone has that in their ascendant, I mean, they're going to have an edge on life. They're going to be someone that takes very good care of their their body. They're they're going to they're just going to have an edge. You know, it doesn't mean they're going to be mean and nasty. But Mars does have this really fiery type of energy that can that, that can just sort of overcome and overtake and it, it is the god of war you know I don't want to paint a horrible picture to Mars because in our charts Mars has a purpose you know Mars is that energy that gets us that gets us what we want that gets us what we need and in many cases that's our driving force in this life well Mars and Rahu actually but um, and, and some people have those those conjunctions in their chart and boy oh boy they have a willpower of iron i tell you that there's there's nothing that's going to stop them they they once they put something in their sights they're just going to march right right there and get it so it has its purpose in astrology for sure and um i don't know all planets are good in their own way and they all have their drawbacks and others yeah absolutely and 
You know, it's interesting here. What, what do I find on, on my favorite happy page? Uh, sheep, you know, and again, the lamb. And when you look to Mars, it's it's Aries. It's the ram, the lamb of God, the ram. Uh, you know, again, it, it's a bait and switch this is what they've done to us. Uh, as you see this guy trying to blend in and probably do, does a wonderful job herding the sheep as as does you know many people unintentionally herding the sheep for the control system. Uh, they've distorted everything in this world. And again, the real Yeshua is uh, an amazing being and one of our prime, prime guides. In fact, when I was doing energy work, and I feel I got an extreme upgrade in my ability to channel because all of a sudden, instead of feeling this gentle magnetic pull when I was laying hands on a client and sending energy into into their um, head, all of a sudden it turned electric. And and I know it was Yeshua that, that basically sat down into me in a chair and was helping me channel uh, this energy because, again, outside of this time-space continuum, uh, you know, <laughs> how could Santa Claus do every house in the world in one night? Well, if you're on the astral plane, you really could because, again, the time is different and we can contact all of these beings. So this is the thing. In, in the Bronze Age, if you develop a good meditative practice and you want to communicate with Yeshua, then you could go ahead and do that. I mean, we could do it now. We might not hear it coming back, or you might hear it coming back. If, again, you are clear and you have put the time, effort, and work into it in this life, but maybe more importantly, past lives. And, you know, that is a big thing is the past lives. And and Cindy and I will be uh, going into more details on an upcoming video, I think, on Patreon for that one. Um, but it's never too late and you got to get started at some point. But again, what you guys are regulars out there, you're all star seeds anyway. So, you know, and you know who you are. You're here on the same mission to, to awaken the sheeple and get them to understand their full potential because you're not born to be a slave. You know, and I just, I just have to mention the blessing of remembering where you're from because there was a time and a point in my life where I was so in the the matrix inside the structure and I would hear people talk about something else and I'm like well what else you know this is the way things go this is what they have set up for us this is the way we have to go and now that I'm outside of the structure I'm looking in I'm saying how <laughs> how could I have been that way? But I, I was in a situation where I didn't have a lot of wiggle room. So I thought, I thought that I had to go the direction that they said. Now that I'm standing outside of it, I mean, I have this full view of my world and I can go in any direction I want because I've discovered so much more out there. You know, they keep us locked in this little world in hopes that we won't look around, but boy, once you do look around and you see what's out there, there's no going back. Absolutely. Again, guys, thanks for your support. Couldn't do it without you. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.